Okay. So we are going to start the session. Uh, please ask all your team members to join because it's essential that everyone is a part of this. Now, this is the final round for this session. This is our third CMK that we have organized. And the, sec the second part of this round is today. And it will be the last part for this session. First of all, before we get into this, uh, there was a lot of questions on why we were paraphrasing everything. What was the use behind it? So I wanted to talk about this a bit. In, uh, since 2018, one of the major goals we had was to improve the learning standard. Now, uh, there's a difference between learning and teaching standard. Since we know that the teaching standard is determined by the teachers and we don't have much of a say in it, the only thing we can do is to improve the learning standard. That is to make it more accessible, to make everything more accessible to everyone and to also improve the standard of education, to make all of us more competitive when it comes to licensing exams in the hospitals, wherever we go. So the first thing we started was with the auxiliary. And the auxilium, the reasoning behind this was long time ago, before uh, most of you guys were there, uh, seniors would have past exam papers. Different seniors would have different things. Some would be more relevant than the others. And that meant only these students, the seniors uh, would give it to a small group of students. They would have a higher, a bigger advantage than the others. Let's take a country like Malaysia. For the first time, we had students last year. They didn't have any seniors. So who would give them these papers? That was the reasoning behind creating Oxygen. That meant everyone had the equal chance when fighting for scholarships in the exams. That's the first thing. Then to improve the ability, the clinical skills, the ability of the students, we started the CMK. And we also bought this doll. It's a CPR dummy. And we even used it uh, during the sessions to uh, do CPR, emergency treatment. And also we practiced uh, all these. So this was the first CMK. And that was how it was supposed to go. Like, where the focus would be on practical knowledge. However, uh, COVID happened. So we had to do it online. And online, we had we did it uh, twice. Then the next thing we had uh, we knew was an issue was the students ha don't have the PPT. They didn't have access to PPTs. They didn't have access to all the content they need in an accessible way. I think you remember there was a time where you would keep asking the teacher, please give us the PPT. Please give us the PPT. Uh, we wanted to get rid of that situation. So we started this link tree. That was the first step. And the goal was to basically get all the PPTs together. Then we started the legacy notes. This was an uh, initiative where the students would make the notes. Now, let's say, for example, uh, you would go for the lecture. The very first day, you would go for a lecture. You have nothing in your hands. You don't have anything uh, which will help you study. And you don't have a compiled summary or a compiled book containing everything that the university asks. So we created something known as legacy notes. And the reasoning behind the word legacy is because this is created by seniors. And initially, when we were students, when we were in our first, second year, uh, these notes, we got it from seniors, such as uh, Malia's elder sister. Maliha uh, from Mauritius, her elder sister. But then we knew her, we had seen her. The juniors, after she left, they had no idea who she was, even though they were using their notes, they would not know the person. So uh, this is open to everyone. If you make proper notes, we will create it as books, make it accessible for everyone like this. And then lecture videos by students. This has to uh, 
this is basically the students are encouraged to make lecture videos upload it on youtube share the links with us we will put it for everyone to use it this is these are things that you guys can join and take part in then the next thing is we started this anki hsk aid and anki uh, so a lot of credit goes to nisha here because she initiated this now if you have watched any video like i'm sure you have watched videos on how to study better one of the first thing that comes is active learning over passive learning so the number one resource for a medical student when it comes to active learning is the use of anki flashcards uh, if you plan to do usmle uh, they, they always talk about flashcards if you are doing usmle if you were in the us as a student it's all about An anki and the flashcards so we are trying to promote active learning here uh we have a few more steps coming up later on but we have made it for both hsk level 4 and for medical chinese all these files were sent to you next we created we basically brought everything together into one location that is our notion platform so let me go through the notion platform so that you know exactly how to use this first of all uh, everyone should have access to study life student life and notion classroom and when you go to study life you have your year and hsk separately if you have to do hsk all the resources that our university has given everything is there and then when you go to your year you will see the credits now if you are looking for the credits and if you want to know how many credits there are for let's say chinese language in the first semester you can see it's 13 credits chinese language in the second semester it has 14 credits so everything is put here and then when you go into each subject everything is made according to the lecture syllabus so let's say you have uh, this tells you exactly okay today we are going to have this lesson this was also something we never had everything was in a mess it was a jumbled mess but now it's available in orders for you to access and then the students life let me talk about the meet the students part and the faqs the first thing about meet the students is they are the seniors they have accomplished something big in this in the university you can read their stories especially when it comes to licensing exams what they did all that their stories are written there the next thing is frequently asked questions everyone needs to know the address of the university the chinese name of the university all those questions everything is answered in the frequently asked questions if there are any questions that you think people might want to know or people are asking from you send it to us we will add it to the faq section and now we are coming to the big basically the biggest initiative we have ever done for the past few weeks okay i i got an up to date account and for the past few weeks several of us we have been downloading files all the files basically we are trying to download the uh, entire library and as you can see till now we have completed this is around 50% of the total 3093 files and st still it's around 50% so this is why we need your help these files will be converted like i did not put all of it obviously uh each team got around 100 and 100 100 to 150 files basically 6 to 7 per person 6 to 7 diseases per person so what our goal is is to create a uh, english chinese pinyin form of everything and we will get chinese students to proofread the whole thing so that one day when you go to hospitals in china if you are doing internship there uh, you have this information let's say you are talking to a patient the patient asks you how uh, okay i have diabetes how do i administer insulin all the information you have it you will have it ready and for that we are creating something known as the nmu international students app uh, it's in the works that's all i can say for now and then future initiatives like i'll be gone in a 
uh, hopefully soon but then yeah uh, but then the next group of people you can't let this just go to waste uh, you have to try to create a standardized question bank that should be the next step because once you create a standardized question bank i'm not talking about the weird questions we get uh, the questions that are asking things from the most small corners of the topics i'm talking about actual um, board level questions and once that is done then the students okay this is something that you might hate but this is essential you need to go and convince the teachers to raise the standard instead of asking okay in ethics what are the four main rules of ethics uh, you know um, i can't remember now but basically they ask you to write the four memorize and write that is useless when it comes to a medical student uh, you will memorize and go and the moment you leave the exam hall you have forgotten everything you studied however if you were to practice it as mcqs as active learning methods then it is unlikely you will forget it so the students whoever comes to uh, like whoever takes over make sure you try to convince the teachers to change the way they ask questions to make it more mcq based instead of memorizing things and make sure the mcqs are actually standardized okay so that's my big thing uh, let's begin the competition today i hope everyone has joined uh, team leaders make sure everyone is here let's begin our session today round 4 and here's how it's going to be today uh, right now we are going to have a, a breakout room and each team will go there and prepare for their cases they have 12 minutes okay they have 12 minutes for three topics 12 minutes for three topics i hope the students have been added okay to the groups because uh, the invigilators will send the remaining two case files you have already been sent one case file the remaining two case files will be sent to you prepare for it and you come back and then you will start the presentation so the goal here today's session is first to get sick of reading articles okay that's the first thing you need to be able to appreciate medical literature that is uh, you hear people saying okay i read this article all this stuff be a part of that now uh, read medical literature that's the first objective the second objective is to help create the nmu archives and because this is a big project i will make sure everyone is compensated like i will talk to the teachers and uh, uh, make sure that everyone is compensated for their participation in this and also as i mentioned previously create the groundwork for chinese english interactions so that's the initiative of the article reading and paraphrasing the second thing is patient education you need to le learn to talk to a patient like it's true you learn to take a history you are very formal can i please know your name can i please know your gender can i know, please know your age it's a very formal situation when it comes to taking history that's the way you have learned how do you empathize and talk to a patient when explaining their diagnosis how do you talk to a patient and make it clear that you understand what they are going through uh that is the objective of this round okay to practice giving the patient a clear diagnosis of a clear explanation of the diagnosis sorry and let's start team 1's round so uh, team 1 i'm going to open the uh breakout rooms if there is anyone who has doubts in the other teams like how to uh, do the paraphrasing you can use that time to ask me that okay and once team one comes out team two go into the breakout room okay and the invigilator please go to the uh, breakout room too okay so here is the team one's case study they have to talk to a difficult patient that is a schizophrenia patient then you have two normal patients one with aortic stenosis the other one is acute rheumatic fever 
Okay, that is all I'm gonna say now. I'm opening the breakout rooms. Team one. Ashan, should I send the files now? Yeah, send it. Okay. And uh, after, set the timer, 12 minutes and come back. Right. Um, if the other team is left, um, I wanted to ask about the paraphrasing. Like there were certain articles which weren't complete because of the login thing. Yeah. Uh, like, so leave it for now. I will go through the articles which are missing. And when the Chinese students take over, I will uh, make sure that at least they do that part. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. One more thing. Uh, make sure it's the reason why it has to be paraphrased is before we can use that, we need to put it through a plagiarism checker. Uh, it checks if the article is like every basically what it right. does is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it checks every, if there are any other articles in the, in the journal same, with the same language. Yeah, yeah same language, same. Uh, every three words, they will check. Is every three words the same? That's what a plagiarism check does. So we need to avoid that. And uh, yeah. If anyone has doubts or has Can, uh, the text from uh, many of the PDFs is, isn't getting selected and it, uh, we are not able to copy it to paste in paraphrasing or something. Let me show. Yeah. My screen. Okay. Open gynecology patient information PDFs. Okay. If you can. Give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your team number? Team number two. Team two, uh, patient profiles, right? Gynecology obstetrics. Tell me a name. Um, you can check common breast problems. Wait, uh, is that the name? Common. Okay, breastfeeding problems. Okay. Common breastfeeding problem. Try to select something if you are able to. Give me a second. I'm getting. You know what? Uh, yeah, these files are. Yeah, these are read only. Yeah. No, these are, I think these are image. Yeah, we, uh, that's for, uh, for these, uh, if there's a lot, like if every file is like that, then um, most of them. Yeah, every file is like that. Yeah. yeah. Takes like 20 of time. I, yeah, I think we had to actually first turn it into a Word document and then uh, from there we could, uh, we could, we could copy and paste or do whatever with it. Uh, is that I think if, I think if someone has a like a pro converter. version of PDF, they can convert it into text. It does that automatically. If that is possible, please uh, do that. If not, uh, if it is or, still not, or possible, you can go it. the long route and use yeah. Google Lens for the text. Yeah, that's we are doing. We are using a third party app, but it's very tedious process. If you have an it's almost double. device, you can just uh, take a screenshot and then from yeah. the gallery you true, can select true. the thing. I, I think that Actually, would be you're saying Yeah, that OCR is we are using a third party OCR, but it's very tedious process. It's taking almost double time to do that. But yeah, it's but guys, if if because with the with the online, there's online uh, sites, free online sites where we can um, put the PDF file, choose a PDF file and uh, download the Word document. So that really makes it much easier. Okay. Uh, thank you. Like there's one called PDF to Word, I think. PDF to Word doc. You guys can check it out. Thank you so much uh, for the yeah, because alternate those alternatives are actually the only way that might be possible. Uh, 
Also, Shar, one more yeah. thing. Will the symptoms and everything be checked by the plagiarizer because we can't really change the the Did actual it? things of the disease, right? Like the symptoms and everything, we can't really change that for disease. So, will that also get detected by a plagiarizer? I know that's fine. The thing is, what it does is it checks every third word. Like if three words in a row are the same, then it detects it as plagiarism. But as long as it's through a paraphraser, uh, it won't be an issue. They usually, yeah. And uh, also, like we are making this event not just a um, you know student level, like a international student level event. It's becoming a a uh, whole university event because we are going to get the Chinese students in more. Like, it has been a lot of, yeah, it's it's a big process, but we are sort of, uh, thanks to everyone here, we will be done with around 50% of it by today. So if you have any questions on um, the round, if you want to know how the round will go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, could you read the call? Uh, I need yeah. to take a call. Sean? Yeah. Oh, did you get a chance to check out StatPulse? StatPulse, I checked. It's actually the NCBI one, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah, I checked it. Like, uh, it has. Uh, how do you say? I'm not sure if it's like as big of a library as. Uh, uh, update, it. Yeah. It, it is actually like yeah. It, it's pretty. It's free information. It's free, so it's like that's the big thing about it. It's not mm -hmm. doesn't require such. Uh, does it allow you to save it as a PDF file? I couldn't check that. I was going through the NCBI uh, things and I was just like trying to figure um, out what's missing. But I'm does not it... sure, but I mean, I don't. Hello. Uh, I'm not sure, like, but I'm, I'm, I, um, I imagine you can save the Chrome page. Okay.
So uh, you guys have five minutes per case, okay? Uh, you guys can take up to five minutes per case uh, when you are presenting. Sean, what about the results of the previous round? It's all ready, like I have it right here. But it was said, right, it will be released just before yeah. the round. Oh uh, no, uh, I said it will be released uh, just after this round is finished. Just check that message. Like, uh, yeah, we will release it today. Like the moment each team tells, okay, we are done with the files. All uh, Once all teams are done, we are sending the results because we need to add the final marks to it. Like for round one, two, three, it's already calculated. For round four, uh, I'm not connecting it now. So guys, remember you have five minutes to present each case, okay? Schizophrenia patient, out stenosis, whatever it is, you have five minutes to present. So 12 minutes to prepare. 12 minutes in the breakout room, right? Yeah, so. All right. So let me just give you guys some um, important. Okay, let's see. Uh, see what I can help you guys with here. Uh, just make sure you differentiate between talking to a patient when taking the history, and actually talking to the patient about the diagnosis. Like uh, how you see your doctor talk to you. Uh, try to be like that. Not a medical student who's taking a history. Like if you are a very rigid person, then um, that's not very empathetic. So we are back. Okay, awesome. So uh, team two, you guys can go into the uh, room. Yeah, these will be your topics, a bipolar patient, a cannabis use disorder, and acute rheumatic fever. Okay. Okay. So I have to do Sean, this. Sean, you're back. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have to do this. Uh, I'll be the one who's going to act as the schizophrenia patient. Mm. Let me... If I smile, I'm sorry. I have, uh, it's, I'm supposed to maintain a very flat effect. Okay. You can pass it off as a Jeffrey Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, these are the questions. These are what you need to explain to this patient. Okay. The schizophrenia patient is going to be a difficult patient. You need to have, uh, you need to handle that patient. Okay. Uh, let's see how well you guys do. Is everyone ready in your team? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you have five minutes. Whatever you guys tell in this time, it will be marked. All the judges, please mark. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. So a schizophrenia patient is now in front of you. Okay. And the patient has uh, symptoms of. How do you say? 
yeah, uh, schizophrenia with persecutory delusions. That is, he thinks that someone is out to get him. That's what you're gonna show it as, okay? You guys can start. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, sir. May I first confirm your name and your date of birth? Wait, 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 wait. Where am I? Who is this? Who is this? Uh, who, who is Arshin. this? Me and Nisha will be what presenting the schizophrenia case. Wait. Yeah. What, what is schizophrenia? What are you accusing me of? Uh, uh, hi, sir. Don't you so, know that the government is after me? Can't you see that I came here because I needed to escape from the government? Didn't you watch yes. the news? Okay. Sir. Didn't you see that? Sir, uh, this chair. Chair right now. Okay. Read in, read in, read in, read out. Chair, chair. Okay. Chair. Okay. Sure. 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 We are here. We are here to explain what is happening. Can you please? We are here to explain what is happening. Can you please close? So we are not here. I'm afraid. Yes, sir. Sure do that. Be we are here to help you out. We are here to hear what you are saying. We are not here to harm you in any case. So okay. we just need your cooperation. Are you from the government? No, we are not from the government. No. So you yeah. can trust with us. OK. So, so first, can I please so, confirm uh, your name? And so this, is, what, this is what happened. This is my story. So uh, three days ago, if you watch the news, you'd have seen Project Veritas. It has, uh, there was a radar on their journalists. And because of that, uh, they had taken a lot of files and now they are running. And then- Yes, uh, yes so we, yesterday, we saw, we understand yes, what you're, yes, we understand, yes. we surely understand what you're feeling. And uh, we are here to explain everything what you are going through. So if you please cooperate with us, we'll, we'll be able to help you in a better way. We are not from the government. We are here to help you out. So first of all, uh, uh, I would like to confirm your name and your age. It's me. I just call me, uh, just use any pronoun you want. Okay. So, uh, hi, sir. We are, uh, we are here to help you out. And uh, first of all, uh, we believe that uh, the people around you have been complaining that you have been seeing or doing, uh, you have been seeing or hearing things which are not actually there. That's but what how can the you people say that? around you. How can you say something like that? Because I know for a fact that yesterday, just yesterday, there was 450 GB of files which was uploaded, which held a lot of government secrets. And I know for a fact that it will be next. It will be me next. Okay, they will come okay, out to me okay. next. Okay, okay. <laughs> Listen to us now. So, uh, Arshin will be explaining what's happening to you. Okay, Arshin. I assume that uh, um, that there are some behavior, that there are some uh, instances which you are feeling afraid of, but others say that they are not actually that it's not actually the case. Who said so that? first Who of said? all, first of all. Uh, um, Wait, what's going on? Nisha can... Nisha. Yes, okay. So, is there any... Someone talking to you? Is there anyone talking to you? Or, or do you see things? No, but then uh, there's always a microphone which is following me. Can't you see it? It's right behind me right now. Okay. Can't you see the camera? Okay, yes. Okay, okay. So, do you see other than the cameras? Do you see anything else other than the cameras? No, I do not. Can I... I, okay, can I know how long is this been happening? How long was this been happening? So, uh, they have been following me for the last three days. Three days, okay. So, before that, is, isn't there anything uh, guys, let happening me, with you? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you don't have to question the patient. You need to explain to the patient the diagnosis. Okay? Okay. Um, uh, but go on, go on. Okay, so what you're having now is schizophrenia. What? Wait. Okay, so... So we are not accusing you of anything, surely. We are actually here to help you out because what you are 
uh, seeing is not uh, actually what is happening. So we assume we think that you have a that you have schizophrenia, and uh, do you uh, do you feel that there's any uh, there's any any problem like uh, with learning or memory? Do you keep forgetting things? No, my memory is fine. Okay. Okay, so this schizophrenia is a brain disorder where it keeps you from thinking clearly. And this can cause you to see things or hear things which is not true. They aren't there. So, mister, there are no government who is chasing after you. Everything is in here. How sure are you about that? I am very sure. Please trust us in this. And we are here to help you with that. Okay. okay, so there are a few treatments, and I'll not prescribe any medicines for now. We'll, we'll provide you other treatments like um, group therapy and uh, life skill training. Do you work out? Do you work out? I do. Yes, that's a very good thing. So Continue the, your daily exercise, maintain a healthy, balanced diet. And do you drink or smoke? I do not. Uh, you can okay. uh, sort of so you can, uh, conclude the meeting now. You can conclude this because five minutes are up. Okay. You can conclude. Okay. Uh, assume I understood what you were telling. How would you end okay. the meeting? So, Thank you for your time, and we will be telling you if like we will be meeting you in the next section, and I hope that you follow whatever holds you, and things will get better. Okay. 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 I need a feedback from you guys after this. Okay. Uh, about the performance. Okay. Uh, Aortic stenosis. You guys can start. I'm going to. Be someone who knows nothing about this diagnosis. Okay, and here are the templates. Uh, I will most likely uh, ask you these questions based on these. Hello, doctor. Can you tell me my diagnosis? First question. Hello. Uh, we are here to let you know about the aortic stenosis. Uh, sorry, we are here to tell you about uh, what you are going through, and according to our. Uh, reports that your diagnosis is aortic stenosis. So what actually aortic stenosis is uh, that valve of your arteries is getting narrower and uh, the aortic wall is kind of gateway that allows you, uh, that opens uh, that opening in your heart and allows the blood to flow from your heart to other parts of your body. And this narrowing, which is called as stenosis, it uh, makes your ha uh, heart work harder to pump blood and it may get worse over time. So who gets it and how did it happen actually? So it usually happens in people who are like older than uh, 65 or 60 years. But however, in some people, it might be a defect in the aortic valve by birth or more likely to get even in younger age or you can also get even if you are smoking, like if you are smoking in your young age to look cool, but it's not actually cool, you might get aortic stenosis. And also people who might have high blood pressure, diabetes or high cholesterol. And how like, how will it affect your future? Uh, future? Hey, actually- Let me ask that. Okay. How, uh, how will this affect me? What is going to happen to me? Um, my colleague, uh, like I want to ask Sukirti, would you like to explain this? Sorry. Hi. So basically, for now, if you are experiencing the like major symptoms, shortness of breath, etc., or maybe pain in your chest, then you should uh, come again. But if it's normal for now then you can continue with your life but do come regularly for checkup so if it worsens we can monitor regularly. the condition and if it... <laughs> how regularly do you think i should come 
like uh, some bi weekly at least like every 15 days or two it depends on how severe is your aortic stenosis like if you didn't get the treatment on time or it didn't get managed you like you have the life your life expectancy would be severely decreased and because in this case the blood a uh, very less blood come to your aorta and your pulse will be very weak and that might lead to a sudden cardiac death so it depends on how worsen you are your symptoms okay i uh, got uh the medicine what should i do should i drink medicine or is there any surgery for this no medicines so, usually won't work like usually you have to go through the uh, replacement the aortic valve even balloon therapy won't work in most of the cases in aortic valve uh, usually you have to replace your valves and uh, like if your symptoms are major we can try medicines but but since aorta is sending blood to whole of the body uh, it would be better if you replace your aortic valves so uh, will i if, have to schedule the surgery or will you schedule the surgery for me what should i do uh, we will schedule surgery according to your uh, how however you will be free and according to you okay and also we need to run some uh, test for your treatment uh, like uh, we need to do a echo uh, where we need to check if your left ventricle is undergoing hypertrophy or your uh, like pressure gradient is normal or not we need to run some ecgs and we also need to run some chest x rays to confirm how severe is your aortic stenosis okay what is uh, hypertrophy hypertrophy is uh, when your heart uh, tries to pump uh, try, uh, tries to push the blood against a large amount of pressure your heart will continuously work and due to that your heart muscles get uh, larger uh, that's uh, like uh, increasing the size of your size of, of the cells heart. of your heart cells okay uh, is that it if you're done you can uh, do you, the next would you like to ask something else no that's would you like to ask something else no that's the main okay we will start your treatment soon thank, thank you. you uh if you want you can start acute rheumatic fever right now if not i'll give you guys a minute i'm going to i'm going to start this yeah i'm ready okay okay you can start let's start yeah uh, doctor what is my diagnosis my what is wrong with me what so uh first can i ask your name and your age yeah it's sean i'm 64 years old 64 years old and i'm a female uh so okay first we would like to discuss your diagnosis we think you have acute rheumatic fever we got this by doing a swab from your throat and we checked for the bacteria uh it's called a streptococcus bacteria and uh, the diagnosis is found through this culture through this test okay usually hmm? as a kid you might have had sore throat uh many times throughout your life uh if you have had rheumatic fever uh pretty often then through various tests we can figure out what is wrong with you yeah, but how will usually, this affect me usually it is done by throat swab blood test how so, will this affect uh, me so if My you partner. don't if you don't treat it uh it can lead to se some serious conditions and uh it it may give you long like long term uh, untreated condition may lead to heart damage rheumatic heart diseases uh so i would i recommend you to treat it as soon as you can huh? doctors I like now oh, doctors i have a question uh, i want to ask about i want to ask a question about she is my wife so we have three kids together and uh, i have seen him always use, having these jerky body movements and he can't even do anything without any help so will this condition improve no no can no, we no. do something 
like uh, there there is a chance uh, this can get from genetic but usually it's not contagious so you don't have to worry now but uh, you can test your kids and you know yeah. because it's an acute so doctor chronic case you don't have to worry okay doctor so how long will it take for his conditions to improve um and will his treatment be expensive because we don't have that much money to spend on healthcare it's uh, really okay don't worry. usually uh rheumatic arthritis gets better with antibiotics and it is uh, the medication will not go on for the rest of your life so oh. so he will be only getting worse from here then so is she it's not like worse but he have to get the treatment he get the medications we provide him with antibiotics penicillin and nsaid drugs okay That's doctor good. thank you for that darling make you have sure any you're... questions to ask make sure your person your doctor gets enough uh, bed rest i do okay and i will make sure it's on time okay uh let's okay so is that yeah that's good thank you so much kamadi because i uh, forgot that okay we had yeah it's a uh help me in the third groups case study okay um so team 2 has yeah. come out of the breakout room so i think team 3 can go yeah oh, so team 1 you guys can actually leave you guys can continue the work and once you are done send me a message because once all the teams are done i will release the results uh for all four rounds for the cmk and by tonight i'll send the form for you guys to fill and yeah that will be the end of this entire uh, event okay so if you want you can stay if you want you guys can leave that's up to you team 3 you guys can go to the breakout room thank you okay so team 2 uh akshaya will be the patient wait what oh so yeah team 2 you guys can start doctor my name is akshaya I think there's a mistake in the cases. Uh, you guys can. Start. I it's ADHD. Okay. Right? Can you guys see me? Uh, bipolar, right? Yeah. You uh, start with the bipolar case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, doctor. Hi. How are you? What's your name? My name is Akshaya. And what? Uh, what's your age? I'm twenty-five. Twenty-five. so what is wrong with you well, well, sorry wow well, well, why are you here what's the problem well i didn't want to come here first of all okay okay but a few days ago i thought that my boyfriend was cheating on me so i went to the girl's car and i was about to start slashing the tires and then my best friend stopped me uh my best friend came with me to this session um her name is comedy okay and um so she said that my behavior was concerning and that i should probably be a therapist so? or a Why psychiatrist so i concerning she thought i was going to No. Okay. Oh. 
Oh God. So, okay. I mean, at that time, I felt like I didn't that it was an okay behavior. But then I guess after a few days, I was feeling really down, and I was looking at my behavior. And I thought probably I should, you know, talk to a doctor about it. Hmm. Okay. So your best friend told you to come here and talk with us, right? Mm-hmm. Seems like your big best friend is loyal to you. Okay. She's really loyal. Okay. And these days, doctor, I've been feeling like really depressed. I've been sleeping for hours and hours. And I've been having there, really sad thoughts. Is there any time you do anything? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I just feel, guess. sometimes I feel like I'm like on the top of the world and I can achieve anything. I okay, want and to. sometimes you feel very depressed. Okay, yeah, right. Is there anything which can change your mood? Like, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you? Uh, Suddenly feel like very depressed. What happened in between these things? What happened that you can completely change your mood? Sometimes there's no reason. It just happens. Okay. Uh, hi, so, doctor. I'm her friend, Kaumati. Oh, I actually hello. came to the session uh, with her. So, doctor, what do you think we should do to treat her condition? Looks like okay. she has. Is there something wrong with me in the first place? Not, not a big thing. You are completely fine. There's some. Uh, we will give some medications, and you will be fine. Okay, no problem at all. It's just you know it can uh, 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 abrupt your big mood changes. You know when you feel like happy and suddenly go depressed, you might feel uncomfortable. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, I will give you some medications. And it... Is there anything that I can help my friend with to control this, to help her manage this condition? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, you have to, you know, uh, look for her all uh, most of the time. You do Just not, avoid uh, her situation. You, 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 you have to avoid her to getting too depressed, Okay. It's a, it's a, it's called a bipolar disorder. Okay, no, no need to worry more about it. it okay, she is fine right now. Nothing to worry. Okay, How so. How you get bipolar uh, disorder though? Uh, bipolar disorder, you know, it. Uh, when. Uh, okay. It's, it's a, it's a, there been something. Uh, it's a new, new the highest feeling Hello. of everything. Like you are at the top of everything, whether it's anxiety, sleep, or uh, whether even you are happy. Whatever the feel you are having, you will feel it at the most, like completely at the top level of that particular feeling. So that's basically bipolar disorder you can there is no uh, exact cause you know it can occur to anybody mm -hmm. okay there is not exact cause and uh, it happens sometimes you know uh, your uh, neurotransmitter or you can then this can uh, kind of things happen okay so no need to worry about this okay so so what would the treatments be doctor uh, we can basically start some medications uh, some drugs, including uh, first line and the second line defenses. And if the first one doesn't work, then we'll continue and see if, if the second one works. Do these drugs they, have any side effects? Like I've heard the these uh, psychiatric drugs have so many side effects. This, uh, some might have. Uh, yeah, there will, there, usually there will not. be some side effects, but... Yes. Uh, uh, they'll not will... be so. They'll not be so extreme. So, uh, what kind nothing. of side side effects would that be? You know, like you, in general, there might be a little bit of weight gain. Uh, 
uh, high mm-hmm. blood sugar diabetes if mellitus diabetes mellitus and cholesterol but we will prefer clorazepine as it have minimum uh, minimum of side effect yeah, yeah. and mainly uh, mainly we will uh, uh, see the you know uh, her and, her blood sugar will be high and she may observe her uh, weight gain okay she may observe some weight gain okay, so no doctor. need to worry about these things okay okay no okay. okay. it will be like her her signs can be like decrease after after taking some medicine after some time there is a chance that she can be stabilized but it can be good but if if the friends and family can arrange a a kind of stable environment around her and just stop her from getting into uh, to emotional we can maintain it by giving her a counseling or something like that okay i think we should move on to the next case now um i have a patient who has cannabis use disorder so doctor how can you help help me out uh, i uh, so what's your name um i'm abhash okay abhash uh, how old are you um i'm 18 okay, okay. so uh, what makes you use the substance what makes you use this substance is uh, or what's the frequency how many times do you use in a day also well i uh, okay um i think i use around two or three times a day every day okay so i, I want to ask something like uh, you have this in your uh, family history does your uh, your mother or your father or uncle or any influence use it no but my friends do okay your friends do all right so what do you feel the after consuming it uh, does it give you a high yes okay okay so i want to ask something uh, do you have any yellowing in the fingers um actually yeah okay other than uh, this thing do you feel uh, the states of depression or anxiety when i stop using yes so i start using to you okay. know okay so it gives you a high that. all right so doctor um what should i do to help myself over here okay so the thing is uh, with the use of cannabis it basically maintains uh, we need to maintain a certain level we can't stop it like that uh, it can cause withdrawal syndrome mm-hmm. so we can't just drop the levels from right. here to zero so it's it's not advisable so what we are going to do how we will manage is uh, we will start detoxification therapy we will uh, held some rehab sessions it can be outpatient also so in this way we will uh, basically manage your thing okay and um, is this going to affect my future in yeah. any way so we need to stop it at some time uh, this temporarily high is not advisable it can affect your health it can affect your vital organs right yeah anything else you want to ask um do i have to take any medications yeah we will start you on detoxification medications okay so it will be managed okay. this way all right yeah. thank you doctor no problem i okay we, the third case is actually adhd so i am yes. a patient who has adhd hi doctor hi so hi. how are you doing i'm good uh, my name is akshaya and how old are you i'm 22 okay so what has brought you in today what's happening um, i think uh, i have um, a lot of energy and focus uh, sorry and like difficulty in focusing on stuff okay so is it a focusing on your studies or is it in a everyday life okay um i think you have to go with the assumption here that you know i have adhd so we have to proceed from there 
Okay. Is that like did you understand? You are not trying to diagnose the patient. You yeah, already know the so condition. Yeah, I have my diagnosis. So just explain to the patient okay. what her condition is. Okay, then. I'm right. sorry. So, doctor, okay. uh, what what do I have? What's the explanation for you know all these symptoms that I'm having? Yes. So, based on your symptoms that you have said, you're you're not focusing on your daily activities. So based on a couple of examinations that we have carried out with you last time, so we come up with um, a neuropsychotic disorders. It is not something bad. It is actually something very common in children as well as mm -hmm. adults. So we call it the attention deficit neurohyperactivity disorder. Okay, we abbreviate it as ADHD. Now that you sounds would... very scary. No, it's not scary. Like I'm say, telling you, there are a lot of children who have this in their childhood, but as they grow up with the, require, uh, with the required therapy and help from the team, they get uh, better and better, okay? So what else do you want me to advise you um, on? How do you think I got this disorder that you're talking about? So now it can be as, it can be that there is, it is a genetic disorder that maybe your family had before. Maybe it's also your environment in which you have brought, in, uh, brought up in uh, uh, that has affected you. Yes. Anything more I can help you with? Doctor, do you think? Yes. Uh, okay, ready. Ready? The approach to this. Uh, disorder is mainly of two types like stimulants and the non-stimulants but uh, according to your uh, cardiac function it is important to so, uh, so if you have uh, the uh, there are various therapy apart from medication like psychotherapy and cognitive behavior therapy which can also be used which involves use, usually the counseling which helps to improve the time management and your behavioral impulsive nature or the skills for to better uh, to develop your better problem solving skills so um, do i have to start doing these uh, the therapies that you have mentioned urgently it is based upon uh, like it is usually better to take it as early as possible so it won't exaggerate more all right thank you doctor thank you uh, Aksha, that was really good uh let's go on to the next one dn are you doing the next one or um i actually forgot am i supposed to do the next one or are you doing it uh, you're supposed okay to do this psychiatric case right dissociative yeah. amnesia okay uh so I wanted to actually trial run it in the middle. Um, but, uh, tell the group four to go into the breakout room. Yeah, team four. Okay, uh, Diane, you can start the allergic rhinitis case. Uh, you're muted, you're muted. Uh, we're not doing the psychiatric case first, right? Not in this round, not in this okay. one. Okay, okay um, group three, are you ready? We'll be doing the rhinitis case first? Yeah. Okay, so who will be asking, I mean, uh, advising the patient? Can I have uh, a name, please? Yeah, me, uh, me and Sushmita. Uh, me is? Jyotika and Sushmita. Okay, okay. So I'll be referring to both of you as doctors. Either of you can uh, reply. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so doctor, uh, what is my diagnosis? Uh, uh, hi, can we, uh, can you tell us your age? Uh, I'm 69 years old. And what are your chief complaints? Uh, guys, this is not a history taking. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, 
what is my diagnosis doctor i've told you uh, so it is you know the diagnosis okay so we think you you have allergic rhinitis like as we saw your airways the inflamed and it might have occurred because of any allergen like any pollen dust do you have any kind of allergy uh, i'm not sure doctor i don't know if i have an allergy but i tend to sneeze a lot when i go outside especially when i visit gardens and oh okay okay uh, so i have pollen allergy and like we can do your skin trick test to like see uh, doctor can you tell me why do i have this why do i have this allergy what happens to me when why is this happening to me uh this is the hypersensitivity one reaction so these okay, are i don't, under, I don't understand the meaning of the word hypersensitivity can you explain please yeah like when uh, the first exposure occur to any kind of allergens your body tends to produce uh, i uh, I'm, i'm sorry <laughs> IgE, IgE, yeah, and then they bind to mast cell, and then, then uh, when another exposure occurs, it produces hay fever. Hay fever, doctor. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by hay fever? I I don't I'm a simple person, doctor. I don't understand these technical words. I don't understand what IgE is. Okay, it's uh, immunoglobin. e and generally it occurs like uh, in these seasons because of uh, these allergens okay doctor uh, what test should i do for me for you to confirm this diagnosis because i i am very confused doctor like what 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 test should i be doing uh, the uh, the gold standard is generally uh, skin prick test so we'll be seeing uh, from what allergens like uh, you are allergic like it'll be basically an uh, reaction between antigen and sensitized mast cell which will produce veal and flare skin response then we can uh, diagnose it properly doctor you're using a lot of big words doctor i don't know what this sensitized mast cell and all of that is but anyways uh, what medication should i take doctor will is there a cure for this uh, yeah you can take uh, antihistamines or any decongestant but don't take decongestant like more than 5 to 7 days because that can have rebound rhinitis or mast cell stabilizers what 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 okay its management can be simple it consists okay. of three phase like you can take medicine or you can take immuno something to increase your immunity okay. or something which is very simple that is environmental control okay. okay which is best and most important that is you have to avoid that is causing you the trouble okay what if that doesn't avoid, work what should i avoid doctor like is there a group of things that i should avoid because i think i like i you say you when you go to garden you, you start sneezing yes doctor you try to wear mask your eyes are teary then you should avoid going in se- season when but similar like the, she is someone who like gardening so no, no, much you can you can so wear much. so can you like like gardening you, completely controlled so as a drug of choice we can also use steroid intranasal sprays okay is is there any oral medication i take to, to take doctor i'm not very uh, i'm i don't you can take very... antihistamine how long mitrazine when should i take this doctor and how long should i use this for the antihistamine actually we prefer first the environmental controls if it's not sufficient will provide you with some immunity boost immunity boosters to increase your immunity so that it doesn't get hypersensitive hypersensitive means it's creating a reaction more than a usual body creates that's why it's causing you trouble okay so uh, if it also don't work we'll is, shift you to the pharmacological techniques which includes medicine 
uh, doctor, will I have any uh, adverse reactions to this medicine? I'm a bit scared to take medicine because I have heard Google that it gives a lot of side effects. Yes, they give, but uh, allergic medicines are only given when you experience some allergy. Um, okay, if you no. use in proper dose, like generally, it won't have that much side effects, but you might get a, a little bit headache. That's why we'll prefer intranasal spray of steroids. Yeah. Okay, doctor, I have another question. How do you know that this is uh, allergic rhinitis and it's not a common cold? Why cannot it be a common cold? It's allergic rhinitis. Can you say that right? It's activated when you go to the garden. And... Do you have more habit of doing like this? <laughs> yes, I do that. And also I have some, um, yeah, I do that. Yeah. And we also have allergic shyness. We can also see allergic shyness in you. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for your advice. So uh, let's talk about the dissociative personality disorder. Kamadi, can you check the messages? Uh, will you be the first scenario or the second scenario? Where did you send the message? Uh, on uh, uh, Zoom. On Zoom. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, the first one or the second one? <laughs> Uh, second one. Okay, so uh, right now, uh, theme three, it will be me and Kamadi who will be presenting the dissociative personality disorder. Now, the first thing I need to tell you guys is uh, we are going a bit overboard with this one because in reality, uh, if you watch a movie such as Glass, the personalities change as you watch. That is a very rare condition. Mainly it presents as amnesia. Okay, the patient can't remember. However, we will bring a bit of uh, personality changes in this conversation, okay? So let's begin. Uh, doctor, I was brought in by my friend who said that she found me at the airport and um, she's saying that I uh, told her I went on a vacation and then I came back, but then I don't have any memory of such a thing happening. Can you tell me what's wrong with me? Hello, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's they, them. Uh, first of all, please say that. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Hi. Oh, hi, they, them. Uh, first of all, please say that. Uh, I have uh, studied your case and I know you have uh, some problems with uh, your memory and you're not able to remember things uh, from the past. Okay. Uh, um, and it's nothing to be scared of and we will treat you and we will make you feel better and comfortable. Uh, we believe that you have a disorder named the dissociative personality disorder. Okay. But then uh, why don't I remember my vacation? They say that I went on vacation. I showed them uh, pictures. I actually have the pictures on my phone, but I don't remember anything that happened there. What has happened there? It's fine, sir. It's fine, sir. Uh, that you can't remember, and we are here to help you with that problem only. Doctor, you know, I went on this vacation a long time, uh, like recently. We went to Singapore. It was so beautiful, and uh, we went by plane. And me and my friend actually went, and we went to this island. I think it was called Sentosa Island. I don't know. And we went on a lot of rides. It was amazing. That was the best days of my life, doctor. Yeah, it's good to so, hear that. Uh, so, have you been to Singapore, doctor? Uh, no, ma'am. No, sir, I have not been to Singapore. Oh, you should. It's really, really great. Um. Anyway, why am I here? Uh, okay. Hey, what's uh, going so on? Wait, what, what, what am I doing here? Please, uh, doctor, can you tell me what's happening? Uh, yes, sir, you had a complaint that you can't remember things. That's why you are here. Um, hello? Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, I would like to uh, ask you a few more questions. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, since okay, so from whatever we've seen, uh, you have come into the um, into our department, and um, you are exhibiting cases. Uh, you are exhibiting um, signs of a particular uh, disorder, and we would like to confirm the uh, diagnosis. Uh, would you be willing to help us? Yeah. What do you need? Okay, uh, so since you were tell, uh, do you remember telling us about uh, about the photographs of a vacation that your friend told you about? I do remember. I just told you right now. Yeah. What's so, yeah. so uh, a few. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you something. Uh, please listen carefully. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, what we think uh, you have is a uh, dissociative disorder um, uh, in which you create a different persona for yourself. All right. You mean, doctor, like there's someone else living in my head? Yeah, uh, not. Yeah, OK. You, you could say that if you if that makes you understand it better. Uh, would you be willing to, uh, uh, you know, record this conversation? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'll just uh, set up a camera and we can have this conversation. Don't worry, this uh, video will not be leaked anywhere. You can delete it okay. afterwards. It Why do you only... want to video this? So basically, this can uh, help you understand your condition and uh, uh, it will also help us determine uh, what we should do further on. Okay, Would so... that be okay? Okay, so what you were saying, doctor, I don't... Yeah, Why so... am I here? So you uh, you presented here your other persona, if I may. Uh, your other persona presented here, and uh, they wanted to. Uh, they even they had the same question, and they were uh, experiencing some memory loss issues. Okay. Uh, do you also have any issues like that? No, not really. Okay. Not really. Uh, it's just this time it has happened. Okay. All right. So uh, as you can see uh, in this camera, can, uh, can you I, tell me what the treatment is? What can I do to avoid this? Okay, uh, there can be. Uh, so, did you understand the condition when? Well, as I look at the video, I can understand. Uh, All right. Uh, so my uh, my colleague here, Shubhangi, uh, uh, Doctor Shubhangi, she'll let you know about the treatment. Okay. Would that be okay? Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, we will help you with this problem as uh, we will take you to the psychotherapy treatment and we will talk with you in a comfortable environment and uh, we will help you treat this condition through some talking and through medications. Okay. And you will be through with this problem. Okay. okay, I will end it uh, now. Uh, Dian, you can uh, take over. Thank you, Kamadi. Thank you so much. Okay, see you. Okay, uh, uh, who will be uh, giving me the information? I mean, the doctor's advice. Who, who, who would I be talking to? Uh, Shubhaman Satyam. Okay, are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, doctor, uh, you, you're telling me that you're suspecting iron deficiency anemia. Uh, why do I have this, doctor? Why do you think so? Uh, as the name suggests, like uh, you have deficiency of iron in your body. Your intake of iron has been uh, less through your food. Uh, you might be eating more of uh, vegan food. Maybe that's why. And uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia mainly defines that your body doesn't have enough iron to produce hemoglobin, which is the major oxygen carrier inside your body. And uh, if this uh, pigment is less in your body, then you will have a uh, harder time to, uh, uh, you know, you will feel more fatigued. You will feel weak because uh, there is lack of oxygen in your body, uh, like uh, your tissues, in your muscles, etc. Uh, how will this affect my day-to-day -day life, doctor? Do you think this will be a problem? Because I work as a bus driver. 
uh, as I told you already, uh, the major complication of uh, anemia is fatigue. And uh, a bus driver, as you know, you have to just sit on the same seat for the whole day. And your uh, like uh, back muscles will be weakened. You will be like uh, more sleepy. And you have uh, like in your further down the line, you have more risk of developing complication in your heart and lungs. Oh. Like, yeah. You will have abnormally fast heartbeat. Like uh, that will excel and that might, uh, uh, that might lead to the same stimulus as adrenaline. Okay, and doctor. How can I prevent this doctor? Is there anything I can do for this to stop happening? Will I be fully cured? Yeah, like you can be fully cured for that. You have to focus on your metabol metabol uh, for you have to focus on your food products which you are intaking. You have to take uh, those food items which are rich in iron, like which will which will uh, get metabolized in body and like produce uh, adequate amount of hemoglobin, so that these symptoms can be overcome. Usually. It takes seven to ten days if you take uh, if you take uh, iron rich diets, but uh, like if symptoms get worsen, then you have to switch towards medications, which which depends upon the severity of signs and symptoms. Which medication should I take, doctor? A uh, ferrous sulfate or cyanocobalamin rich uh, liquids, which are taken or orally. How long should I take it for, doctor? Normally, it is. It is given for three to uh, eight weeks duration. Depends upon the uh, dep depends upon your uh, like uh, your physical appearance and your uh, general state, body state. It may vary. Uh, like, will it give me any side effects? I'm, I don't want to have. Yeah, any... uh, inflammation bowel inflammation bowel syndrome. You can you can suffer from inflammation bowel syndrome symptoms like. Because uh, if you are taking drug orally, it, it is get for that metabolism of this drug is necessary. And if you have any uh, issues like uh, drug intolerance in your body, it can create inflammation. Uh, doctor, what do you mean by drug intolerance? I don't understand that term. Like some people in a population have a hypersensitivity or allergic reaction towards certain, uh, certain drugs. Like it is not possible that uh, every every person is like uh, comfortable with that amount of drug. So when you take a, a allergen, it induces allergy in your body, which uh, which uh, inter which results in inflammation. Okay, doctor, I'm a bit of a hurry. I have to go now. When should I come for my follow up? Uh, do I have to come back again to do any tests? What test should I do? Uh, you, I will prescribe you complete blood count test. Uh, like from that we will be able to uh, we will come to know how severe is your condition and you have to come after seven days okay okay thank you doctor okay okay yeah done yeah done right uh, next is the next thing yeah. so Shan, can you pin my video? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's go with the side case first. Uh, so a brief introduction. Um, a 26 year, 26 year old male uh, coming to see the residential psychiatrist uh, after losing my job and uh, my girlfriend also going away, dumping me. All right, so those are some, that's a brief summary. You can start, guys. Hello. Hello. May I know your name and age? Um, so, so I'm 20, 27 years old. Okay, so as it states, uh, you have attempted suicide. So may I know the reason, like how long have you been feeling to do this and what led you to do this? Uh, recently, I was laid off my job. And at the same time, also like 
uh, my relationship, uh, I've been in a relationship for like two years long. She dumped me as well. Okay, so I would uh, like to tell you that I'm here to help you. You don't need to worry much. Uh, if you don't mind, can I ask you it's some questions? Crap. My life has been crap. Like, you know, it's, it's always been crap. You know, uh, like from the get-go, it, it's been troublesome. And uh, right, like, as it seems now, like everything is falling apart around me. Like, I just okay. hate it. It's okay. I understand you. And... Uh, uh, doctor, I am Sasanga's mother. Actually, doctor, uh, he has been a very cheerful person and very happy, very sweet to everyone. I can't believe he attempted suicide. It's just, it's not just, it's not him. Like, why would he do this? He's not that kind of a person. He's a very strong person. He has faced a lot of problems in his life and he has faced them better than this. Just because his girlfriend left him, I don't think like it could affect him this badly to take his own life okay ma'am so uh, it's uh, it's very normal thing to get into depression and uh, anyone can uh, go through it so i would like to assure you that i'm here I to just, help you just want everything to go away like you know like even when i was trying to came to take away my life i was having these voices in my head like you know like telling me to uh, end it end it it's all going to be okay afterwards it's going to everything's going yes, to go yeah but you are I, it's so getting surrounded like, by being negative so thoughts sometimes. being so angry sometimes like i i can't be in the same it's, room i can't go away like uh, i can't it's go all out. right you'll be fine <laughs> soon don't worry don't worry, you'll be fine soon. Uh, may I ask you that uh, you are having a uh, little interest in or pleasure in doing something like that? Uh, not, or, not at the moment. Like even, even I, I, I used to like food. Like I, I used to love eating, uh, cook and everything. But then I just given up everything. I just, I'm in my room all the way. I keep my curtains closed up without any lights. And then okay, just, so you are uh, feeling tired or having little energy. Any changes in the food habits? I I want to know that. If you don't, um, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tired, and then I'm, I'm just given up. Like I don't feel like there's anything good going to happen to me ever again. Like I feel like as if my life is over right now. Doctor, okay. what can we do to improve this condition, doctor? Is there any treatment that can help him? Yes. Um, hi, uh, can I know your name, please, ma'am? I'm Kaumadi, Sasanga's mother. All right, so as a child, he was quite fine, right? Yes, he was very cheerful. All right, so do you have any family history of depression in any of your sites? <laughs> depression. Uh, uh, actually, All right, so depression uh, is actually quite a fancy word, but the thing is, it's quite common, Sasanga. You don't have to be always be feeling low. All of us do quite at some point of time. But your mother is here to make sure that you are worth everything. See, she's always by your side, right? You have your family with you. What's the use? They're going to go away after some time. He okay. is not going to go away. Neither am I. We are here to help you. You just have to trust us. And that's all I need from you. I just need to know that it's going to get better, but then it doesn't seem so. I can't get myself. Of course, it will. Of course, it will get better, but it will only be how, by how your do you know and that? me. Because I've you seen so many other patients. Yourself. I've seen so many other patients. People go through breakups all the time, Sasanga. People lose their jobs all the time. It's okay. You just have to get out of it. Maybe in the future, you're going to find something much better to fight for it. All of us do, right? So what kind of treatments can you give him, doctor? Okay, yes, so before that, I would actually like to tell you, ma'am, that um, by you, did he use any weapon to, uh, you know, do his kind of suicide or anything? Or how was it? Because you need to keep these kind of harmful substances away from him for a while. Yeah, you, you can see his wrist, doctor, like he attempted suicide by uh, cutting out his... I would just suggest you to baby-proof the whole house. That's the word we can use, you know, not to keep away all the... I'm of course, you're me. not a baby, but we are in this case, right? So, what and can we? What can we? How can we help him? Okay, with okay. The behavior. Okay. Yes. 
Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's go with the the two cases. Okay, that was the good. treatment. Yeah, let's go with the other two cases. So we'll start with uh, yeah. mitral stenosis. Okay, okay. so I'll start with right. Yeah. So, okay. doctor, uh, what, what do I have? Like, what is my condition? So, hello. Um, what is your name? How is how has the day been today? Uh, I'm Mam Sasanga. Like, uh, I'm fifty years old. Uh, yeah. So, you you already have my test results. I'm just going to. I'm I'm coming back for the referral. Like, can you tell me what's wrong with me? Yeah, sure. But before that, I have a few questions uh, for you. So, yeah. um, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling right now? Uh, actually, the lift was broken on the way, so I had to climb this uh, flight of stairs. I'm, you can see I'm exhausted and I'm out of breath. Right. So, you have this uh, shortness of breath only while exercising or even while you rest on your sofa and watch TV? Uh, it was... It was to begin with, it was just uh, on physical exertion when I used to run on the treadmill. But then now, even like uh, just walking up and down the stairs, it's going to give me this, uh, this sweat and this, uh, this breathlessness. Okay. So you have any chest discomfort? Do you feel that something's stuck inside your chest? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, yes. I feel that there's as if there's some, uh, some, something heavy laid on my chest. Okay. And uh, do you find your legs or uh, your feet are uh, swollen at times? Yes. Yes. Guys, okay. just to be, uh, your, the diagnosis you already know, so you have to go from that point on. Okay? okay. You're not trying to go down the diagnosis. You already know the diagnosis. You need to go and go ahead and treat, give the treatment plan and everything. Okay. okay. So, uh, Dr. Mahashi will continue with the diagnosis. Yeah. Okay. What do I have, okay, Dr. Okay, so we went through all the symptoms you said and all the tests you've done, the chest x-ray and the uh, auscultations. Uh, according to the uh, symptoms and tests we have done, we think you have mitral stenosis, which is uh, there are valves in your heart that open up and close when the heart chambers get filled with blood. So one of okay. the valves in your heart is now not opening properly. So it needs oh, to be that sounds open. serious. Is it serious? Sorry? Is it a serious condition? That sounds there's, there's, uh, pro there's problem with my heart. Is yes. it serious? Uh, uh, yes, looking at your um, symptoms and uh, signs on the x-ray, we think it's a severe uh, condition, a moderate to severe condition of uh, mitral stenosis. So like from time to time, doctor, like this, this has been a new, new, new symptom sign. As in, I like when I when I have exertion, like my my face turns light blue. It turns light blue, and then sometimes my cheeks get red. Like, what does that mean? Uh, that's because your heart uh, cannot pump blood properly because the blood supply to the heart is not sufficient because the, your valve is not opening. So the blood doesn't flow through the uh, chamber that uh, pumps blood into your body. So you could uh, feel uh, these type of symptoms as you don't get blood to those organs and due to low oxygen. Uh, it's not for to work. To get person, person Sorry? Is it going to get is it going to get severe uh, like without any treatment? If, un if untreated, it uh, it gets severe. So we um, uh, we right. recommend you get treatment as possible and prevent any other complications. If you don't get treatment, uh, you can have heart failure kind of um, complications heart that failure. could be even severe. Is it is it manageable, doctor? It's no. manageable with proper care and uh, proper treatment. Uh, just, just one more question. Like, uh, does having this, uh, you said it was mitral stenosis. Does it, uh, uh, does it mean that I can get any other, uh, other types of diseases in my heart? Yes, uh, because of mitral stenosis, your other valves could go uh, have some kind of problems like uh, inability mm -hmm. to open and close. So it you could have a cardiac encephalopathy. Hypertrophy. You can have hypertrophy, cardiac hypertrophy. What's, what's encephalopathy? I'm not, I don't know what that means. 
you can have the uh, pressure building up inside your heart can cause um, your heart to enlarge okay okay so can i go back to the i think uh, can i go back to the normal state uh, like i before before i had the can i can i get uh, can i get my normal life back of course we'll perform a mitral valve percutaneous mitral valvectomy on you and after that you have to take care of yourself you have to do little exercise you don't have to worry because sudden death are very rare in mitral stenosis you can live your live, live your life properly okay okay thank you doctor thank you you also have to come up for uh, follow up sessions so stay in touch with your doctor all right let's go to the last one acne vagaris yeah who's going to take the case hello vivan uh, koda yeah hello hello could you please tell me your name um sasanga okay yeah you are diagnosed with acne vulgaris after looking at your symptoms and make a diagnosis for acne vulgaris what is that doctor uh, it's a common skin condition that is due to the excessive production of sebum or any bacteria that uh, that clog that clog your hair for the kids it lead to inflammation is is it the reason or, is, is that the reason why i have all these like pimples in my face yeah yeah because it common yeah, it's common involved due to in this condition uh, neck face and um, proximal uh, extremities right. it can be due to excessive hormonal secretion like androgens at the stage of puberty it can also be due to the secretion of pilosebaceous glands over secretion so it accumulates that hair follicle pore and it turns into white heads or black heads oh, is this condition contagious so doctor you, can spread it to someone no usually it's not usually it is due to hormonal the, imbalance dietary imbalance to, or to take precautions should i take precautions because because uh, uh i'm with my when i'm with my girlfriend like should i take precautions i don't think it will spread by contact or something okay how okay uh, can i can i uh, what type of treatment do i have for this condition how can i get this treated doctor you can you can use some topical creams like anti inflammatory that will help uh, um yes na yes yes na yes, 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 please sorry, um, so so introduce to you the treatment of uh, of acne vulgaris yeah okay so i All was right. saying to manage this problem maybe you can first wash try to wash your face twice a day or maybe three times a day and do you often touch your face with your hand yes very often son so i have my specs i usually yes so i would advise you to to try not to touch your face with your hand as much as possible and if ever you feel like you have to touch your face just to remember maybe you can wash your face immediately maybe with some uh, warm water doctor like the, the most pressing matter for me is that will this go away like i'm concerned about the looks like i don't want any scarring or pimples to be there can you do anything to like get this get rid of this yes okay um this, i would suggest you some uh, cream maybe you can you can use a tropical cream for oral use so isotray tinoin you can use this cream and i would suggest you first you try it um, for one month and then you see how how is the effect and if it's good then we can continue with this or if it is you see no progress maybe we can change to something else like uh, tetracycline i can give you an antibiotics okay so you are you are telling me that i should be concerned about this that it will go away completely Yeah. you can also I concentrate on a diet like don't 
eat too much oily food it will increase the secretion of pyliosebaceous gland so try avoiding avoid eating oily foods so uh, you, you didn't answer my question like will this go away i'm concerned about these pimples where leaving yes. scar um you you worried <laughs> right about the future and um yes exactly yes the, the future and if if the lesion will heal so yes. in terms of the lesion there's three possibilities that can happen the first one is uh, something that we call a sequela um a sequela unfortunately that one would not go away um it will stay but uh, the hope is that through continuous medication um you can actually have what we call a hyperpigmentation and uh, a post inflammatory hyperpigmentation can heal it will take some time but it can heal and then uh, another possibility is that there might be scarring um so but all of it all depends on how well you are sticking to the uh, treatment protocol that we so so uh, that means that means i have to i have to uh, come for regular checkups is it yes so in terms of checkups you you actually you don't need to come in as regularly for example on a weekly basis but it could be more on a quarterly basis um unless if there is any worsening um one thing though that what we what we will schedule for you is um a, a um for you to go for psychological counsel because um we do know that this it's not easy to 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 deal with this and to be able to accept oneself right um in these kind of situations All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so just much. one question, uh, please, before we go. Um, our one of our doctors, Dr. Yeshna, told you two drugs earlier to use. Did yes. you manage to grab those? Hello, yes. Sir, Sanya, hello. I did. Okay. All right. Hello. Perfect. Hello, thank am you. I audible? Thank you. So we'll finish. Yeah. Hello, Sanya. Yeah. 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 Actually, I'm not. Hello. Yeah. Actually, I lost my connection. Like your family member asked, na, like, was the treatment of suicidal thing? Like, so yeah, I want to just uh, complete my part. Like, you can use the SSRI for the treatment. Uh, all right. Okay. Right, right. okay thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two five can take. Okay. Okay, in five, but clearly depressed patient and Gillian Bar. Okay, let me tell you guys something. Gillian Bar was the first neurological patient we had when we had a uh, neuro class in, uh, practicals in the hospital. I mean, we haven't experienced any GBS patients, so uh, expectations should be low. Uh, you guys can start. Who's the invigilate Arutni, right? Arutni. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can. So, yeah. So the first uh, case is a uh, psychiatric case, right? Depressed patient. So I'll give you a brief introduction of the patient. Uh, she's a 45 year old female. You can call whatever name. Uh, and um, her husband has died two years ago. Uh, so that's you have taken the history and everything. Now you have to explain the diagnosis and the treatment to the patient. Uh, here, I may start now. Hi. Hi, doctor. Hi. Like uh, we have got to know that you are going through a depression these days. Is that true? Mm, yeah, I just told you. I, I just don't want to be here and I just don't want to talk about it and I feel weak. I just told you that. What what makes you feel like that? Is there any specific reason? No, I've been feeling about like this for about a year now and I've seen multiple doctors. I, I haven't uh, feeling well even though I have seen multiple doctors like you. Uh, I I'm just fed up of this. I just don't want to be be here right now. Um, well, um, before we proceed, I just want to let you know um, this is a safe space, and the doctors here will not 
give out any information to anyone else um it's an it's completely anonymous and you can speak about whatever you want to speak about because these are professionals and they are here to help you so you can move on now okay but the thing is i've i've seen multiple doctors and i've uh, you know told them my problem and uh, they seem to have you know they seem to not understand about my problem the pain i'm going through and um, today i i just didn't want to be here my sister dragged me here and uh, i don't think you all can get me um, i i don't think you all can understand what i'm saying have you been have you been on uh, medication since the past few weeks or months i yeah just uh, some medications some doctors gave medications but i didn't care enough to take them regularly because i don't think there's a um there's a resolution for this i i don't think there's an uh, the only thing i feel right now is i feel very empty and i just don't believe um what anyone says and i i just don't want to live and that's about it that's the only way i can get through my pain i feel you uh, have you have you been doing psychological sessions about like from visiting doctors yeah i i told you i i I've, i've been seeing a lot of doctors like at least two to three doctors for the past year and no one seemed to understand what i'm going through um nothing worked actually you often say like you say to me three times that uh, you don't want like you don't want to be here or like you keep I don't know, yeah. like I'm going to say this but because I I don't want to be here because I've been to uh, similar places before and um the first time I went there I had belief that the doctor would you know uh, do something and I'll I'll feel better but none of that worked none of the things the doctors did worked like does it mean that you keep on thinking the same things at all times yeah i'm i i'm i'm i used to be a very um um cheerful person like 2 or 3 years ago but now i i don't go out anymore i just don't talk i just don't even talk to my friends anymore and i don't want to live like this doctor you do you think you can do anything for me because otherwise this i don't think you know I this is a way, just I a think- waste of time otherwise we can do it together if we if you don't have the will power to to get better we won't be able to do anything to be honest so i think with a group of doctors and together with you as the patient i think that you can get better even okay. like you're not depressed at, at all but what i wanted to ask is that isn't there any moment during the day that you feel okay like the way you were 2 to 3 years ego um uh, sorry i so uh, doctor i just want to know uh, what can you do for me what kind of uh, if you all have medications any other medications i've not um, had before uh, do you all have um, some kind of plan for me okay, because like, this is I... the la- this is probably prob- probably the last time i'm um, i'm coming here that's why I think maybe uh, my colleague can can assist you in that Helen are you there Okay yeah I'm here uh, hi hi uh, so uh, I just want to know like uh, I will ask certain questions to uh, know like how how severe it is so like do you have the like, kind of palpitations or uh, during your depressed okay you have a clinically diagnosed with depression all right and it is uh, like very common like 280 million people worldwide has it so you don't need to worry it's it's because uh, you had like a life changing traumatic event so it's because of that i suppose you are going through it so uh, have you seen like psychotherapists before yeah i told you i've i've seen many <clears throat> okay yeah. uh guys you uh, i think we have to move to the other case because five minutes up uh okay any concluding uh, questions ma'am um 
actually regarding your treatment we'd like to move into different routes either we go with the medications for which we need your previous prescriptions so that we know where it is okay. going wrong on the other okay. way um, we'd li uh, like you to see a counselor based on your uh, medications um, we'd like you to give a set of medicines which you need to take for about 2 weeks right and okay. um, i uh, we'd like you to um, you know visit us after 2 weeks based mm -hmm. on how those medicines work yeah, okay um i have my moment. prescriptions with my sister I'll, I'll give it to you yeah let's see okay uh, guys are uh, now yeah uh, the next right. case would be but parry syndrome uh, you all can start uh, explaining to me right now okay um are we have do you have a right upper abdomen pain or tenderness yeah uh, guys this is not not history taking you all have to you all have the diagnosis you have okay. to explain what it is to me no history okay. taking okay. okay okay so you have been diagnosed with bartjari syndrome so oh, oh, doctor 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 what's I, i have not heard that before is that bad is uh, is that, does that mean i'm going to die nothing oh to worry God. about with proper medication you will be fine you just need some precautions and the medications nothing to okay. much worry about you are you are in proper hands and we will take good care of you okay ha uh, doctor that name is so strange can you explain what it is because i my uh, my uh, son and daughter have been asking me about this i didn't know what is happening i just told them i have a liver problem and Uh, um, that's what it. happens can you explain that to me what happens in the disease is your hepatic mm. venous system gets uh, clogged in a sense and your blood flow out of your liver is not proper so we will give you certain medications like uh, anticoagulants antithrombotics uh, so it the whatever the coagulation is it will get cured and if it is in a severe case then we might need some surgical operations Uh, otherwise mm. it is totally curable with the medication can't we can't we just stick to oral like uh, taking other medications and not go into surgery because i'm very scared about it definitely if the if the medication work then we won't be uh, we the surgery won't be necessary okay uh do you think my liver will get better and uh, i can is it like 100% treatable not like not 100 not 100% not 100% with the medications okay. it is like 80 80 to 85% curable okay uh all right um so uh, how long will she have to take medications doctor um she has about... to take into medicines without going for the surgery yeah um siddhi you are on mute so yeah uh, so the time of the medication you will be required will be only be depending on the anatomical characteristics when, uh, like the size of the clot or the uh, uh, harm that your liver has got uh, till now so uh, according to it uh, the thrombol uh, lytic agents which we will prescribe you now will uh, help to uh, dissolve your clot and thereby will help you get better so uh, if if this medication works well then uh, the time required for reco recovery will be uh, decreased so it uh, basically depends on how well uh, the clot uh, gets recovered okay uh yeah that's about it let uh, shall we move on to the other case gailan bar syndrome okay all right start now yeah hi uh, i am going to be a doctor today uh, along with me is dr harshita uh, nice to meet you um, can i know your name and age please um i'm ann and i'm um, 57 years old All right, great. So, Anne, uh, we've just found out that you've been diagnosed with Gillen-Barr syndrome. 
have you heard okay. anything about this before do you know anything about no, it no no oh my god no i haven't heard about it before no. well okay first things first there's no need to be worried gillen bar is just, okay. it might seem like a big name but it's actually just the name of two doctors who found the disease so it's not that big uh, of a deal um okay. so <laughs> is are there any particular questions that you would like to ask about the disease um i just want to know like how can i get better because you know i told you doctor like it's it's been very difficult with this and i just want to know how long it will take for me to get better right i can understand see okay. gbs um, or gillen bar syndrome is it has a very good prognostic uh, factor in the sense that nearly 85% mm-hmm. of the cases that we get they you know they go back to normal um mm-hmm. or at least with very mm-hmm. minor side effects so in case you already are diagnosed we need to act on you very quickly and we need to start treatment as soon as possible because we need to avoid the possibility of any uh, complications occurring which is which could lead to further problems but as long as we avoid the complications we should be all uh, we should all be good um particularly uh, speaking i'm sure you must be experiencing some sort of limb weakness some sort of yes. problem yes will the pain go away doctor is there any any uh, remedy will... for it there will be weakness and there will be a little bit of you might even face problems in breathing but that's what yeah. we're here to avoid we're here to avoid prevent that from reaching a severe stage so one of the primary treatments for that is the use of uh, intravenous immunoglobin now that might what's, sound what's intravenous immunoglobin intravenous immunoglobin is, is just a fancy way of saying that we'll be inserting some immunoglobulins okay. or some uh, medicine into your body to help okay uh, you fight off the reason behind your uh, gillen bar syndrome okay to is explain there to any... you the reason the behind gbs i uh, have my colleague here uh, dr harshita okay. okay harshita you muted okay so hi you may still see a little doctor my son uh, who is about like 35 years old he is worried that he might get this is this is there any genetic connection for it it is a autoimmune disease okay 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 so you don't have to worry about that it is okay. uh, but uh, you need to get it checked uh, that's a must okay, okay. Uh, but you have to make sure Okay, there are some reasons that can trigger it even more. Okay, uh, okay. my colleague just told you that it is not uh, very risky in your case, and mm-hmm. I think that there are only one to two severe cases in hundred and thousand of people in the whole okay. world. So you don't have okay. to worry about it. And sixty to eighty percent of it in the severe cases can walk in like six months. Mm-hmm. um okay. while we're on this okay. uh, i'd like to know if there's any uh, other complications that you have any other illnesses that you face no um just the thing i pointed out in the examination and uh, when you talk to me uh, earlier that's about it and i want to know uh, what are the other thing do i have to come here again and you know are, are there any other uh, you know tests See, that um, should be done as far as tests go we'll have to keep a check okay. on your neurological um, we'll have to check basically your functions if your uh, motor functions if your muscles are getting any better okay. if your okay. respiration is decreased any so we you will have to 
come repeat um, have repeat visits in the hospital to have checkups basically to make sure that your situation isn't getting worse okay i hope uh, i can get better yeah yeah, yeah i mean that, yeah. if you don't uh, you know uh, the symptoms progresses okay in the case of gps okay. uh, right okay. now you won't be feeling much symptoms but in the coming few weeks the symptoms are gonna be like more do do so, i need to pay attention to anything specifically when i'm home and uh, uh we prefer that you, uh, we want you to be hospitalized uh, if okay. the case progresses okay if you think the sensation in your body is increasing in the coming hmm. few weeks we uh, would uh, recommend that you should get hospitalized and we'll give your treatment as per needed Right. Okay, um, doctor. Okay. Are there any guys or questions that you have? All right. Yeah. Are there any other questions that you have? That's that's it, right? All right. Yeah. Thank you for having no, us. No, no, that's it, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's that's the whole uh, case series. So uh, next step is finish the. Um, what you call the documents and send it please send it by today uh, the moment all the teams are done with the uh, case series we will send the final marks okay and the other thing uh, let me just highlight some stuff uh, you need to allow the okay so these are just some stuff which i found first of all you need to allow the uh, patient to ask questions okay I, at different points i saw that uh, the patient was not being allowed to ask questions next Uh, do not use that big means, words. Uh, huh? Yeah, the other thing was uh, actually uh, when you all when you all were reading the patient, you all were some some of you all were too forward and it was came off a little bit too strict, as in uh, the uh, it, it wasn't very formal. So yeah. that was one point. And uh, the other thing uh, that I saw was okay. uh you can't use big words hypertrophy words like that a uh, gold no, standard it's, yeah it's fine as long as you explain, explain. it exactly yeah. like uh, don't assume the patient knows these words if you are not going to explain it and the other thing is when you greet the patient you need to know their name okay and you need to address them okay in the current uh, world if you are going to a western country to practice medicine you need to figure out what to call them okay because uh, they can call themselves a lizard whatever they call themselves you need to find it and you need to uh, call them that okay so uh, that's something you need to focus on okay then anything else sasanga anyone else because i have a few yeah. more so and then when you all were discussing about the management uh, for example one condition uh, was uh, what is arudhi's task is not gilambare was the other one bachari uh, bachari yeah. so bachari yeah. bachari actually like even uh, it's it's actually a little bit of a serious case but then some of you all said that it's completely curable so when addressing when addressing a point like that it's best not to give them the like you know awesome. raise the hopes to uh, like to the maximum always uh, caution on the side uh, okay this might go wrong uh, not not don't let them know that just say that uh, according to the yeah according to the uh, according to the study so far there there have been there have been certain success uh, success uh, successes and then uh, depending on that uh, go go ahead uh, yeah. stuff like uh, uh, what sasang is saying is very important because you never give false hope to a patient okay because uh, not just uh, team fight even in uh, my my team as well as in the other teams when it came for management y'all uh, y'all uh, raised the patient's expectations to a very maximum level y'all were y'all weren't realistic some of y'all weren't realistic yeah if so, uh, honestly uh, if you are uh, unsure if you are unsure if this is a treatable case tell that uh, you need to tell it in a better way but never give them false hope Yeah, that's exactly. a very important thing uh then there's some uh, i need to mention three people the first one is sarnash i like 
how Sarnash uh, kept it simple and made the consequences clear. Like uh, if the treat, if the patient does not uh, adhere to the treatment, then the consequences, uh, the he made it clear in such a way that it wasn't like it didn't scare the patient, but it made sure the patient understood the consequences. The second Thank one, you. yeah, uh, <laughs> that was good. And Shashank. Uh, when you did the uh, per multiple personality disorder patient, I liked how calm and cool you were. And you made sure that the patient understood. Like it was a very, very nice conversation. And I like how you made the patient understand. Okay. And Kuda. So one thing, uh, the fact that you uh, made it, uh, how do you say, categorized. You said there are three possibilities. And then you talked about each possibility. You had a structure yeah. there. That's all. Awesome. There's one more, the Naoni Hall. Uh, uh, like he, he ma made sure that this, uh, the information was going to be kept confidential. That I like that true, true. point. Yeah, I was also going to uh, mention that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. None of the others mentioned it. Uh, yeah, so that was that was something nice. Yeah, the words, the words safe space, it's a very important tool yeah. that doctors use. It's a, yeah. So uh, anything else? Any other uh, comments? Uh, I think uh, apart from them, I think Harshita, the last case, yeah. she used very simple words and like she tried to like when she, whenever she said a word that the patient might not understand, she asked me, okay, like peripheral <clears throat> nerves, yeah. she asked if you know it and then she explained it in a very simple way. So that was really good. And uh, BB, team two, she gave a really nice, simple explanations, good explanations with empathy, good empathy she had. So yeah. So, any other positive or negative remarks? And uh, also, do not talk like a medical intern uh, because most of you were too rigid and you talk as if, okay, you are not in charge. That's how you talk. You are not bringing the confidence to the patient. You are a doctor. You need to be sure of what you're saying. And you, the thing is 60% of Treating a patient is psychological. Okay, now when I say 60%, at least 40%, sorry, is That's, yeah. psychological. You like, can, uh, yeah. yeah. And when explaining complicated conditions, like for example, in my condition, in my team, uh, uh, mitral stenosis, I think Mohashi explained it in a very nice way. But at the same time, using big, big words, uh, complicated, but it's fine. But she explained it in a very nice way uh, so that I could understand uh, what, what was going on. So make sure you all keep up that standard. At the same time, uh, you, uh, make sure the patient understands it as well. Yeah, you can ask, uh, is this yeah. all clear? Um, is everything I'm saying right now, is it clear? You can ask that. That's actually required in uh, USMLA. Uh, yeah, yeah just sure. it would be very simple, too simple, because then it's just like the, the patient can just Google it uh, from the internet. Yeah. Try to add something new, try to add something complicated, and make sure the patient knows it at the end of the day. That's all. Yeah, because an informed patient makes better choices than an uninformed one. Okay, so that is the end of our round. And yeah. And uh, the main thing, do not promise patients anything. Uh, you never say, I promise you'll become better. Biggest mistake you can make. Okay, you can actually get sued. So that's it. Please send the files to, uh, by tonight because we have been uh, working on this for a uh, few weeks, like I'm sure like Arudni, uh, Kaumadidian, uh, Shanali, Sasanga. If I didn't mention anyone, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. We'll take a photo before we go. Yeah. Okay. I was so, dying to, wasn't dying to Yeah, so it was a lot of work to get all those files. So please uh, help us complete this because it's anyway, in the end, it'll be for all of us. Okay. So uh, that's no, the end of... Huh? Sorry. Yeah, exactly. 